Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to play Super Nintendo games on an emulator on your iPad. The first thing you need to do is to jailbreak your iPad. And that's very easy to do. If you Google on how to jailbreak your iPad, one of the options you might see is a program called Absinthe. There are many other types, but Absinthe is one of the most popular. You download it and install it on your computer, connect your iPad with your cable, start the program and click one button and it does the rest. As of this video, the latest version of Absinthe supports iOS system software 5.1.1. If you're jailbreaking your iPad after this video was made, you might want to make sure that your version of iOS is supported by Absinthe, otherwise you might want to try to downgrade your iOS software. If you back up your iPad before you jailbreak it and remove all of the media, it'll go a lot faster. If not, it'll just take a bit longer. You can just go get a cup of coffee or something. If you do jailbreak a clean iPad, you can always use one of your backups to restore all of your apps. Once it's jailbroken, it works just like before. You still have the Apple App Store, you can buy apps from it, and you can upgrade existing apps. But additionally, your jailbroken iPad will now have a new app store in it called Cydia. Cydia is this icon right here. And it's basically the software repository where you can buy and download or just download free software that are made specially for jailbroken iPads that Apple will not allow in the regular App Store. One of those pieces of software are Nintendo emulators. There are many kinds of emulators for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and so on. And even within a certain emulator, there are several vendors that sell or give away their product. So let's go ahead and start Cydia. When you start Cydia for the first time, it may go through a process of downloading the latest packages and repositories to update the Cydia program itself. But once it's done, it'll say Reloading Cydia and it'll kick you to this home screen. Then you should go to the search icon and type in SNES 9X. Now, if you just do SNES emulator or Super Nintendo emulator, you may get a lot of results, and some of those apps will work just fine, but the authors might be charging you $5 or $10 or what have you. And there's really no need, because almost all of those apps use the SNES 9X engine, which is the freeware app that was uh, created to, to play Super Nintendo games in the first place. You can find essentially the same version on your Windows machine or your Mac computers. So there's really no need to pay for a Super Nintendo emulator when this one is just as good if not better. So go ahead and select SNES 9X. You'll get a screen that tells you what the program is about as well as other information. On the upper right hand corner on your iPad if you don't have it installed already it will be a blue button that says install. Mine says modify because I've already installed it. All you have to do is click install, click confirm, and let Cydia download and install the app and return you back to the screen. Once you're done installing SNES 9X EX, the emulator, you want to go ahead and load some ROMs into your iPad. ROMs are nothing more than the games themselves. They're usually a download of the cartridge that's put into a file that can be read by the emulator. You need to connect your iPad to your computer using a utility like iPhone Explorer or something similar that will let you explore the directory structure of your iPad. By default, the, Nintendo, the Super Nintendo emulator will look into the private var mobile media folder and subfolders to look for ROMs. You really can put your ROMs into any folder that the app has access to, which is quite a bit but I find it easier to just put it into the default directory and I'll show you what I mean by that. Now when you have it installed you're going to find an icon for it It looks like this. Click it to run it. Now you can see that I already have a game up and running. This is Super Mario World and it's uh, good to show you this because on the screen here you see an overlay of the directional keypad, left button, right button, A, B, X, Y, select and start. You certainly can use this 
and it works really well. But one of the cool things about SNES 9X, and I'm going to exit by clicking on the upper right hand corner. One of the cool things about SNES 9X is the support for a Wii Remote controller. If you buy a Wii controller like this, it just makes your game a lot easier. It connects to your iPad via Bluetooth. So what you want to do is you want to hit this option that says scan for Wiimotes. Now the first time you run it, it may tell you that you need to have an additional component down downloaded called BT Stack. But don't worry, that's really easy. It will take you directly to the Cydia store, down to the download page for BT Stack, and let you download and install it. BT Stack is completely free, and it's very fast and easy to install. The system will walk you through the entire process, but once you're done downloading BT Stack, you'll get back here, and then all you have to do is on your Wii Remote Controller, hit the 1 and the 2 button at the same time, it'll flash, and hit Scan for Wii Remote. Give it a second, it'll communicate with the remote control, and it'll say Wii Remote 1 connected. After that, you should see that your disconnect Bluetooth option is now available. If you touch that, it will disconnect the Wii remote controller. Now, once your remote controller is connected and you have ROMs loaded, you're ready to play. To load a ROM, you hit load game. And you can see here that the folder that I have stored it, the, the ROMs in is called SNES ROMs. And it's a subfolder within private, var, mobile media. And that's the default folder that SNES 9X will start looking at. So I would suggest that you make a subfolder there and put all of your ROMs there. I have a number of games loaded. Breath of Fire 1 and 2, Chrono Trigger, Dragon's Quest, aka Dragon's Warrior, Final Fantasy, and so on. But you can have as many or as little as you want. And it plays almost all the games that are made for the Super Nintendo. So let's go ahead and pick a new one. Let's uh, go with Mario Kart. And there you can see it. Now I'm controlling this with my Wii Remote Controller. And the graphics is really good and the controls are excellent. And there you go, playing Mario Kart on my iPad through an emulator. And actually it works very, very well. Okay, I'm going to pause it. Now to get to the, the main screen, so you can load another game, you can hit on the upper right hand corner like this. And I'm going to exit out of this. Or if you have the controller connected, you can just hit the home button right in the middle. It also takes you to the menu. And then you can just use the directional keys to go up and down and the buttons to select or go back one screen. So let's go ahead and load something else. Like let's say we want to play Chrono Trigger. And obviously this has started. So I've played this before. But just to give you a taste of how it would look. All of this is really done with default graphics and it works really well. And it looks really great. Now the other thing that I'm going to show you as I play this game is one of the neat features of SNES 9X, which is something called Save States. Now, Save States is really cool because it allows you to save your game, any game really, anywhere in the game. You don't have to be at a safe spot, you don't have to be anywhere else. You can be in the middle of the game, and you're ready to, to play. So let me get outside here, and I'll show you what I mean. If I hit the menu button for the emulator, and go to the main menu, so outside of the selecting the ROM I want to play, you can see that I have these load state, save state, and state slot options. One of the cool things I can do is I can pick a save, a save slot, state slot, oops, 
and there are 10 of them. You can either be on auto, I know auto incrementum, or you can manually select the one you're in. Let's say I want to do uh, slot zero, and then I say save state. It asks me if I really want to override it. And if I say yes, that's it. Kicks me back to the game and I'm ready to continue playing. Now one of the nice things is that after you save a state, you can go back to the menu, hit load state, and then it kicks you right back to where you saved it from. This is great if you're playing an arcade game and you are at a boss and you want to try different strategies. You can always get right back to where you just began the fight and not have to suffer any of the consequences. Now the other cool things that you have with this emulator are a bunch of options that you can do. You can do uh, change audio video options and like I said I just did the standard. Okay. And I'm just going to get out of here. Um, other things you can do is you can change the mappings for the keys and you can benchmark the games just to see how fast it goes. But other than that, I think most of the default options work really well. So I hope you enjoy this little tutorial on how to get Super Nintendo emulators running on your iPad and how to connect your Wiimote and how to play games. Alright, good luck!